All right. So I've spent a bunch of time. I went in. I fixed up all my materials. I completed putting materials on the house. And I'm not going to show you all that because it's the exact same thing that we did before. I've t I've found some more trees. And they're free trees. You can grab them too. Let me show you where they are. It's actually an awesome website. Let's go back. This is where you download them. But Viz People is a fantastic site. And they give away a lot of stuff for free. If you go to vizpeople.com, free stuff, you can see they got tree, they got cars, they got these free trees, some of these birch trees. I downloaded some of those to use as an example. But there's, uh, there's these cutouts of people that you can put into your scenes. Some of this is for commercial use, some of it is not. But, these people also sell products and they're they're top notch. They're really good. So if you want a collection of furniture or something, you might want to come check this out. If you want a collection of cars, accessories, fabrics, these people makes really good stuff. So I found some more free free trees on here, some birch trees. I put them into my scene. I proxied them just as we did the other tree, the Evermotion tree that I have. And I did all the materials. The only thing I didn't do was make a, a real grass material. You can see it's just flat right now. Uh, that is, doing nice grass is a little bit beyond the scope of this class. You can use displacement for the grass, which is a little simpler. And I've, I've done a previous video on displacement before, V-Ray displacement. I can show you how to do that using a link to a previous video but it essentially you use like a bump map a black and white map but it actually changes the geometry so that you can make little blades of grass actually stick up, stick up here so that's kind of a, a cheating way to do it the real way to do it is probably by modeling some big chunks of blades of, blades of grass and using something called V-Ray scatter or multi-scatter or what's the other one called trying to think it's forest forest pack okay these are programs that you can take a proxy so what you do is make model a little clump of grass turn it into a proxy and then you can select this whole plane and using parameters in in that plugin either multi scatter or forest pack you can make that grass repeat itself as an instance millions of times around this plane so it would actually put modeled grass in there and that's the professional the real way to do it is like that that is beyond the scope of this class but what I wanted to say is that we have we have our model here and it's actually about ready to render right now we have what we can do instead of modeling all the grass and going in and modeling all the details because that's more of an inter intermediate course what I'm going to show you is rendering it right now and then doing a lot of finishing touches in Photoshop so you can do it either way some people like to be heavy on the Photoshop and they do a lot of editing after the 3D is done to spruce up their image I usually do a lot of the landscaping and everything as much as I can in 3D and then render it out and then do minimal photoshopping. On this project, we're going to do some pretty heavy photoshopping because I'm going to use it to put in a nice picture of grass, I'm going to put in background images, and then I'm going to show you a lot of tips and techniques for for post-processing as we call it, your image. So in this case, we're going to kind of stop the 3D right here because I've showed you all the principles you need and we're going to render and take it from there in Photoshop. Let me show you a few things that I've done as adjustments to my scene in order to get it to work better. With this tree, I forgot to tell you this before, but Evermotion is, they go pretty crazy on the detail of their modeling and also of their materials. So if you select one of these trees, I think I've got one, let's see select a tree go to this slot and I haven't showed you this yet either but if you go to this button here get material 
This is the same one you you go to 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 make a standard into a V-ray material. But here we're just going to go into this drop down of scene materials. And if you if you right click and click on filter selected objects, then that's just going to show you the object in your scene that's selected, the material of that object. And you can double click on it and we'll pop it into this slot here. So I'm looking at the tree material, the leaf material for for that tree. Now, one thing that will bump up your render times like crazy is to put a refraction on it and then turn down the glossiness. So the Evermotion leaves had that because technically leaves do have some refraction going on. They let light through. But that will that will absolutely make your your render time skyrocket. So in this case I'm just going to turn that off to make the refraction black because we can get away without it. It had some translucency and some some translucent maps that I just turned off. I put this to none and turned off this map here by unchecking it down here. And the less the and I made sure my subdivisions weren't too high. This reflection reflection subdivisions was at 16. I put it to 8 because again that really ups your render time. So it's good to use that if your computer can handle it. But even the best of computers, if you put a bunch of those trees in there, and especially if they're stacked on top of each other like this, your render times are going to be crazy. So watch that with Evermotion stuff. These Viz people trees I brought in, their materials were fine. Now one other important thing I did that I have not showed you yet for rendering setup is render elements. Okay, so when the render engine renders something, it's actually rendering several different channels of that image, one of which is the RGB image, which is usually the one we're most interested in. But that RGB image is made up of several other channels that are all combining to create the finished looking RGB channel. So here when we are saving images, we can save the separate render channels. Save RGB, yes. Save alpha, yes. If you don't want to, if you don't know what an alpha channel is, it's essentially a mask where it, it is solid, where it's solid white, where there's any 3D objects, and wherever the, it's looking through to the background, it's going to be black. It's going to look like. So that's my RGB channel there, not a complete one, but the alpha channel will look like that. So in Photoshop, I'll show you how to use that. Now there's this thing called a multi-mat element too. In the V-Ray frame buffer, if you say show last frame buffer or open the V-Ray frame buffer, it will show you all the different channels. So there's a reflection channel. That's all the reflection going on in my scene. Refraction channel. That's the refraction going on. The one I want to talk about is this multi-mat. You can see that's just a solid red wherever my grass is and I set it up like that because I want to be able to use that as a mask when I go into Photoshop so I so if we look at our grass material I can just grab it using this that's another way to grab your material and if I go down on options and go to open up options twirl down and effect ID this should be checked here, override material effect, and then effect ID, and we can set that to 1, 2, or 3. Really you can set it to any number, but our multi-mat is set up to effect numbers 1, 2, and 3 right here. So the red buffer ID is 1, the green buffer is 2, the blue buffer is 3, and it's the material ID that we are adjusting inside the material right here. That is the material ID. So tell it that that's what we want to get. The other thing you can get is object IDs, but we're messing with the material IDs right now, so that's what we want checked. And we're saying that the red buffer is on, check, and it's going to be rendering any material that has this ID as set to 1. So the only thing, by default this is at 0, so I set the grass to 1, and it's the only thing in my scene that's 1. So you'll see that's why when I rendered, I got, let's see, where's my render settings right here? There's a solid red channel 
wherever my grass is at. And that creates a perfect little mask for me that I can use later in Photoshop, and I will show you how to do that. So the essential channels that you absolutely need if you're going to do compositing in Photoshop afterwards, which you should be doing, because that is the proper way to do things. Uh, so the way you save them out is in Frame Buffer here, and it's in the Common tab. You can save save your file right there, but doing it through V-Ray is better through this Global Switches tab. Uh, sorry, the Frame Buffers tab and checking that. Save separate rented channels because this saves all the channels individually. So you definitely need to save RGB, you definitely need to save alpha and the multi mat if you need to cut out any other objects as masks. Reflection, refraction is good to have maybe V-Ray lighting, anything that you might want to kind of enhance or, or uh, edit separately in Photoshop you'll want to have here. I sometimes do V-Ray uh, self-illumination. For this particular scene, none of these are really going to matter because I don't really have any of this stuff going on. But just keep this in mind when you do have these kind of things. Okay, and when you render, you saw what it looks like. I use the V-Ray frame buffer. You can drop down here and show all your channels. Okay. Now these will all be used when we do our compositing in Photoshop. So I think that's it. Uh, I did a lot of tweaking of materials and you'll find that you need to do that. You, you go back and forth, back and forth, render little chunks. You can do a region render using the V-Ray frame buffer just like this. Select that, hit render, and you know you can render just that and just tweak your tweak that vertical siding to be just perfect. All my render settings changed, but that's because we're in the demo version. But anyway, I've done a lot of tweaking, a lot of rendering, and now I'm getting ready to set up for the final rendering. And then we'll move on to post-processing.